Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Mbani. I'm a conservation architect and consultant for disaster risk management and climate action for ICROM's flagship program, First Aid and Resilience for Cultural Heritage in Times of Crisis. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohana Chakraborty. Uh, I am also a conservation architect from India and a consultant for climate action and peace building in the FAR program of ICROM. FAR, uh, First Aid and Resilience for Cultural Heritage in Times of Crisis, is a flagship program of ICROM. The program believes that heritage is not limited to only a physical thing, such as a place, a building, or an artifact. Instead, it may be seen as a social process of bringing the past into the present and making meaning to tackle current crises such as the climate emergency. Based on this belief, FAR aims to build peaceful and disaster resilient communities by integrating the safeguarding and leveraging of heritage in three key areas, disaster risk reduction and resilience, peace building and security, as well as climate action. Building on over 10 years of experience, FAR has developed field-tested methodologies for heritage safeguard by providing training, building knowledge, creating networks, increasing awareness, and informing policy. FAR has reduced risks of conflict and disasters, as well as work towards climate action for people and heritage. Today, the FAR network spans over 1,000 cultural first aiders from over 87 countries. Since 2020, the program has also served 97 member states and 18 non-member states by offering advisory services for protecting cultural heritage before, during, and after a disaster or a conflict. Today, we are in talks with Professor John and Machiko, who will be giving us vital insights on how heritage itself can help to overcome the sense of loss and displacement caused by a disaster. They also translated the FAR resource First Aid to Cultural Heritage in Times of Crisis handbook into Japanese. They will give us their experience after the 2011 tsunamis and how they were able to uh, integrate community-based action on the ground and tell us how by engaging the community in the salvage and restoration of cultural heritage post-disaster can be a powerful means of providing psychosocial support. Let's introduce them. Our first guest today is Ms. Machiko Kamiyama, a clinical psychologist. After working in a hospital for 15 years, she was appointed as a professor of clinical psychology at Yamagata University, where she engaged in teaching and research of, for another 16 years. She also is a, currently a visiting professor in the Preservation of Historical and Cultural Heritage Lab of IRIDS. Machiko lives with her husband, Mr. John Morris, in the city of Tagajo on the coast of Miyagi Prefecture. One third of Tagajo was devastated by the tsunami of 11th March 2011, and together they found themselves to be both disaster survivors, but also specialists providing support for disaster areas. And meanwhile, Professor John Morris was born in Australia, but came to Japan in 1974 to study Japanese history in the Graduate School of the Faculty of Arts at Tohoku University, Sendai. He has lived in Japan since then. He specializes in the local history of Miyagi Prefecture, of which Sendai is the center. He has been the member of Miyagi Shirio Network since it was founded in 2003 to salvage heritage at risk in the aftermath of the series of serious earthquakes which started that year, and he continues today. He has retired from active teaching as a university professor and is currently a visiting professor at the International Research Institute of Disaster Research, Tohoku University. Let us hear in their own words, their story. The difference between doing between salvaging heritage and doing first aid for heritage is that if you're salvaging heritage, you are salvaging things. For example, this heritage cup. The first aid aspect doesn't look at just at the cup, but it looks at the person holding the cup. 
and what this cup means for me. And if I drink water out of this cup, it brings back memories. And the object of locating first aid for heritage as a form of psychosocial support means that you don't just look at the heritage, you look at the people who own the heritage, the people who see the heritage as part of their identity. And that heritage um, in disaster support, uh, how you support people is by linking people together. That is the most effective and cost, not only effective, but also cost effective form of support. You can do this in rich countries, in poor countries. And uh, after the tsunami in 2011, in one area which was very badly hit, one person who lived there, her family had a collection of documents recording the family's history, the history of the region for many generations. And um, one of the members of my group had digitally photographed that material before the tsunami. So after the tsunami, she lost everything. She lost family members, not just her home. Um, the disaster affected her family so that she could never speak to her daughter again. It really, it, it split more. It did more than physical damage. It split human relationships. And uh, we printed out, digitally printed out the all the documents of the family that we had photographed. And in about 2014 or 2015, um, when she had built a house a long way away from the tsunami area and was living there with her family, uh, well, with the one still alive. And we gave her back the collection and she was very happy to get it, um, but she couldn't stop crying. This posed two problems for us. We had, first of all, um, in her case, giving her back her heritage was not enough. Then we, I had a look at her and I said, this woman is in a very dangerous position. Yes, right. here comes so, psychologists. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need, <laughs> the worst thing you could bring in would be a clinical psychologist. That would be a disaster because the clinical psychologist just would say, mm. I'm going to help yes. you. Yes. Tell me all yes. your problems. <laughs> and and <laughs> that's people don't want to do that. What she, they did was she came in and said, I'm a clinical psychologist who is trying to evaluate the work of the historians to make sure they're doing a good job and let her tell, the, say what she wanted to say and didn't make her say what she didn't want to say. You give, gave her a key word, uh, just one key word. What, how, what did you think? What I'm do you recall um, from your experiences with uh, um, the historians? Mm -hmm. And then she talked about what that brought to mind. And then they recorded the data, went back, analyzed it, went back and asked her to sort out the keywords that she had chosen and then line them and then try and put them in some order. And mm -hmm. what that meant was that she was able to order her thoughts. Um, it doesn't look like it's um, psychological support, but actually it's actually a form of therapy. And when she had finished, the what the woman had to say was very surprising. I'll Give you this. When they asked her to give her what she felt about what thoughts she associated with the historians, and she came up with these words. She has negative feelings, but she also has this. She, she was very happy that the historians came. Um, the most important thing was 
when the member of our group who who is called Professor He here, see here, uh, rang her up and said, I'm going to give you back your documents, these documents here. And she was very grateful for that. Another thing we gave them was that we used those documents to write books about the history of each region. And these little booklets, we wrote, Professor C wrote a booklet like this about her family and about her region and how her ancestors had helped the people in the region overcome major famines where almost everyone dies, um, in, and how their ancestors had done all sorts of other things to help the community. When I met her, she was very, she was crying very badly. And why, why on my generation? I, I had to die, yeah. but as a result, she watched her, mm -hmm. How do you say um, association was and watched that the computer looked at, looked at that uh, results yeah. and mm -hmm. I realized that meaning of why I was born into this world. Wow. After that, uh, she mm -hmm. couldn't go back to uh, original community because only her house was um, disappeared or hit, mm -hmm. by, hit by tsunami. And mm -hmm. the other person, other families are still there. She felt alienated from her community. It's a lot right. more complicated. Yeah, that the people of, mm. of her community. The people, that... right, they started reading the book mm. that right. Professor C had written mm. um, because it encouraged them. Mm. She was welcomed into the group, and so she mm. was able to reconnect with her neighbor, former neighbours. Mm. It brought right. the So that booklet brought the community together, and it enabled this woman who felt that she had been become a pariah and mm -hmm. would never be able to speak to anyone again. She was able to go back and she was welcomed back into her community. Um, the people organ running the, the disaster response, uh, the overall disaster response at the prefectural level, at the national level, they did not understand why heritage was important for people, for communities. If you want to do rescue heritage after the disaster, you need to be able to explain why that is important, not just in terms of how many pieces of heritage you salvaged, but also in terms of how many people you were able to provide support for. And that is why psychosocial support is very important why you well it is important for people who want to do heritage to understand uh what so psychosocial support is and when you think about heritage for example in the sendai framework what they're really thinking about is the heritage enshrined in public museums mm -hmm. libraries art galleries and in national sites of memories the heritage that my group was working with is, uh, as I said a little bit earlier, um, not what I call the big heritage, which is in museums, but the little heritage that is held by individual people or communities and is not designated as heritage. And uh, which of these is more important? If you are looking in terms of, for example, heritage as a way of he helping people recover their memories, rebuild their communities, rebuild their bonds, well then little heritage can be as important as big heritage. Not every community has big heritage. Most communities don't have big heritage, but every community has little heritage, even if it's not written down, even if, it, if it's only verb heritage part, stories passed on down as stories or memories. These can all become the little heritage that you can use to rebuild mm -hmm. society. If you have had floods, you might need to rebuild houses. Yeah. But if you rebuild them, just building new houses in itself can actually destroy people's communities, can yeah. destroy people's identities. But 
if I were to go to Pakistan today, what I would suggest is that you get the people who are important in the community mm -hmm. uh, and who other people recognize as being important. Probably the, most, the single most important thing you can do is respect them, listen to them and mm -hmm. ask them, for example, do you want new houses or do you want to repair your houses? put them back so the way they were if you have a religious site then maybe building the mosque as early as you can enable people to deal with their stress more than anything else one other important aspect is if there are any sort of local rituals things that celebrate the cycle of life or the year this, even if um, conditions are still difficult, doing something that recalls life before the disaster can be very important. <laughs> but there were, Japan has the largest number of old people in the world, and old people can get isolated, left behind, yeah. uh, and very alienated after a disaster. Machka was looking for a way to try and support elderly people. The two most vulnerable parts of the population are the all young people and then the old people. For Machko, uh, deal looking at heritage, uh, it's, there are two things. Uh, first of all, Machko had noticed that what my group was doing was a very good form of psychosocial support uh, mm. sometime in about 2012. Mm. But she was too busy helping the children to think about looking at us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then when she had was winding up her work with the children, she was thinking about the next step that she could do as a psychologist. Mm. Um, but the important thing there is that she was working on the premise that working as a clinical psychologist, trying to get people to cry on her shoulder was not effective. People don't think that it is psychosocial support. They just think that they're being given water, that they're be being given food. Mm -hmm. that, that is support in itself. That is more support for a person than crying on a psychologist's shoulder. So the best forms of mental health support for most people after a disaster are embedded in daily life, in daily activities, mm -hmm. and they don't right. look like support. Mm -hmm. So right. for me, cultural mm -hmm. heritage um, mm -hmm. savage mm -hmm. is one of the kind of psychosocial support. Right. What is important is that Machiko doesn't look like she's providing support, mm -hmm. but by she, what she is doing at face value looks like it is demonstrating that the work of the historians helped the subjects, the owners mm -hmm. of the heritage. But at the same time, she is helping the owners of heritage um, reflect on what we did. Mm -hmm. And reflecting on that helps them discover their purpose in life. Probably what is makes the work that MSN did uh, mm -hmm. special is that we, the, the specialists, cannot do their work without the cooperation, participation, and support of the owners and the volunteers. We get, hang on, bad support is where the rescuers come in and support the victims and don't let the victims help themselves. Um, we saw so much of that. This um, second case is that this man, and what this man did was we gave him the money he needed, cloud funded, repairing this, moving it so it was not in the way when the city rebuilt the area and then he turned it into a museum mm -hmm. for the community 
Um, I don't have the other photos, oh, but it is them. also, uh, there's a meeting space. This is uh, in front of this museum now where um, the community can meet, have a wedding. Mm -hmm. There's a community store there uh, where the old people who can't go to the supermarkets a long way away can come and yeah, buy what they need. Yeah. And it's become a focal point for the community. And this, he lived... That's his house there. Mm -hmm. And he evacuated, when the tsunami came, he evacuated up onto this hill. And while he was watching the tsunami wash everything away, what he was thinking was, how can I rebuild? Um, and he was able to lead his community. You can see he's got here, his word groupings are learning from experience, the me meaning of recording history, recovery and the uh, things he associated associated with the tsunami uh, appreciation and the tsunami is a positive thing. Thanks for tsunami. That is. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, thanks to uh, tsunami. To uh, tsunami. Uh, was really cleaned up. Hmm. <laughs> Quite a positivistic approach. <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's a, mm. how to say just a, a starting point mm. for them. And they developed their mm. activities for communities and develop their mm. uh, social capitals and mm. like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> the biggest challenge I face is trying to convince people working in heritage that they need to look beyond just saving heritage to redefine our work uh, in terms of psychosocial support. There is a lot of people like to stay with what they are familiar with. Right. And I think, for example, the a lot of people in heritage uh, in Japan think that they, they cannot save all the heritage that they want to. And so they can't do their, their proper job. How can they then think about something else such as psychosocial support which is very difficult and a very long word to i mean it sounds very difficult um and this inability to move beyond thinking in terms of what you are familiar with to try and embrace a new idea but the problem with that is that Actually, what, uh, at least in Japan, what most people doing the kind of volunteer work that we are doing are already doing very good psychosocial support, even if they don't know it. You don't have to know that what you are doing is psychosocial support for it to be psychosocial support. However, if you understand the principles of psychosocial support, it can help you do the psychosocial part better and avoid hurting people unwittingly saying something that you shouldn't have said I, i'm a clinical psychologist and i trained mm -hmm. uh, for a long time to become a clinical psychologist but this time clinical psychology was useless really? <laughs> for the people for the people in the diesta area who are very healthy and ordinary people so i struggled with that very very rigid idea of ptsd Mm -hmm. in the disaster area. A psychosocial is almost at opposite uh, position against the PTSD oh, model. Okay. And to, how do you say, to show how um, cultural heritage surveys um, are so important. The reason is that I would like to, yes, as Apana wrote, mm -hmm. one major reason is the lack of consideration for cultural heritage within national and international emergency management systems. So I would like to, um, uh, how do you say, contribute to, to establish that the cultural heritage service is very important to help people, particularly after that period of the recovery. And I, I think that was the idea behind the first aid to cultural mm. heritage. Mm. So that is the psychological first aid. It's not just about learning how to help disaster victims. Mm -hmm. It's learning about how to function. Mm. When? 
we met, we were at a conference uh, UNESCO. organized by UNESCO in Paris mm -hmm. in 2018. Uh, 18th, yes. 2018, and Aparna Tan, Tan, Tandon was there. And she had this newly printed, <laughs> uh, hot out of the oven version of psych, uh, First Aid for Heritage. And she was looking for people who wanted it. And we mm. looked at it and we said, we want that. <laughs> and Machiko took it and looked at it and said, I want to translate it on the spot. We <laughs> hope that once that, that is published and people around the world can read it, mm -hmm. well, then things might change a little. It, it, it mm. accepted. Mm. That's a but first of all, well, first of all, you've got to write it, and then. <laughs> uh, anyway, 